It's my pleasure to be here with the uh, M&A for Outremont, the Honorable Raymond Bachon, Minister of Finance, Minister of Revenue. Uh, Mr. Bachon, um, you've decided to seek another mandate uh, in your writing. Uh, was that a hard decision to make? Uh, politics is not an easy life and you've been there for a few years already. It was a hard decision and a family decision first because when you're in politics you're not at home for many days and politics has changed. The last two years is not what I signed for in a sense and what democracy used to be in a sense in Quebec and the acrimony of the debate has put politics at a level which we've never seen in the past and a level of disrespect and starts in the National Assembly by what the opposition throws at us. But, uh, you know, I like people. Why do you do politics? Because you like people. You want to help people. It seems peut-être un peu fleur bleue. But uh, basically, that's the only reason you, you choose this. And depending on the age you have and your experience. Uh, and, and this is a fascinating age. And if you look at the world, you know, this is one of the only places in the planet where we, we've kept the jobs and even created more jobs. And are managing to come back to balanced budget, but pro protecting uh, health and protecting education and uh, so social housing and all the solidarity uh, that we've built in Quebec. And uh, that is kind of unique. My pride, in a sense, if, uh, is, is to have a fourth budget. The next budget is going to be the budget we return to a balanced budget. Right. And that is next spring. You know, the election could be after next spring, could right. be before, but basically that is one of the main reasons also I'm, I'm running again. And I'll tell you, the, the last few months, and we might talk about that, of intimidation, I'm not going to back down in front of intimidation. And I think uh, the society is, uh, uh, I don't like what I've seen in Quebec in the past uh, few weeks, the past few months, and uh, we have to speak out and we have to stand up and... Uh, that's another reason, basically, I say, uh, as a liberal and the values we, we cherish, uh, we have to be there. It's not, now it's not the time, whatever the personal cost, now it's not the time to get out. Did you ever think when you, when you made that uh, increase in the tuition and the budget, did you ever think it was going to result in the chaos we've seen in this province? Uh, no, nobody forecasted that. And basically, for the first 12 months, you know, there was absolutely nothing in, in a sense. But we, and we did consult, you know, I announced that, it's, it's been a 10-year debate, I announced that in the budget two years ago. We had tons of consultation. The students always had one position, zero uh, freeze, zero, zero increase, even some wanted to go back to free tuition. The, the university chancellor, the director of the university, uh, they were asking for $500 per year for, for the first three years. I thought that was too much uh, uh, on the short term for the bill. So that's why we ended up with 325 but we ended up also with uh, increasing the bursaries. Now, in the past few months, uh, basically what you see today is 67,000 students basically are either fully covered or uh, are going to pay less than they paid before. So this is not a debate about accessibility anymore. That was the first debate with the students. Yeah, this is, you're going to, you're going to ruin accessibility to university. This is, this is not true anymore. Uh, because basically there are fully 67,000 out of 200,000 students. And for the students whose parents have up to 100,000 of revenue, uh, they can have loans, which was not the case before. So, uh, we have to invest in universities. We need and we're going to add a billion dollars in the past, in the next seven years in, in universities. Students have to pay their fair share. I think it's a question of social justice between the taxpayer and the student who's going to get a lot of money in his life time yeah. because of his, his or her yeah. diploma. You worked for René Levesque. Uh, what do you think he would say about the behavior of the PQ wearing the red squares, uh, really encouraging civil disobedience? I mean, they haven't helped the situation. Uh, one thing René Lévesque got angry at was any, any sign of violence, of intolerance. He could not support that. You know, he walked in the consultation camps with the U.S. Army, and it marked him for all his life. And tolerance is such a key value for me, and was for him also, that he would not accept uh, and any sign of silence in front of that. And that is what uh, 
I have approached the PQ. You can't stay silent when, when students are beat up in, in entrance at schools because they, they want to stop them from entering schools when you have uh, 100 students wearing black shirts coming into the University of Quebec and hooded and going through the class and putting plastic bags on, on, the, on people's heads and breaking the cell phones of those that have taken pictures and kicking them out of the class. That is why we passed Bill 78, yeah. because never again will the students be denied access by violence and intimidation. Yeah. Are you surprised by the actions of the PQ, or are they just being political opportunists? If you, I, I don't like to talk against people I'm for, but uh, so, no, I'm not surprised because I think that party for the past two years, uh, under the leadership it has today, is a party that basically uh, likes chaos, likes things to go wrong, and will change position. They change position on mining royalties, they change position on tuition fees, they change position on anything depending on the wind of the day. And uh, as for the, the, the CAC, uh, as they're known, uh, when we spoke last fall, uh, exactly what you predicted has happened. You didn't predict uh, uh, that they were going to do very well, and uh, they were uh, leading in the polls when I, spoke, when I interviewed you last fall, and now look where they are. So uh, you weren't impressed with Mr. Legault then, and I suppose you're not terribly impressed with him right now. Well, we're going to be careful because politics are vo is volatile. You know, it's something uh, we have to be. But... Uh, What's the message from the CAC? You know, m more than half of his candidates are former blockists yeah. candidates, so basically people that support independence. Yeah. I don't think that's going to take their roots in Montreal, so it's a mixed up message. The, uh, the your, 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 it's okay. Your your budget. Uh, um, uh, are you are you you feel you're on target? You're on target with the budget you've been doing the last couple of uh, last couple of years to get back to a zero deficit. Uh, the economy, despite what we're seeing on the streets, is is doing better. We're on target. We've had uh, less deficits than we forecasted the past uh, three years, basically. Uh, Five hundred million less this year, billion less uh, the year before, and years just started. We're on target. Slow growth, nothing spectacular, one and a half percent, but employment is very, very strong in Quebec and the Montreal region. We've hit the two million uh, people employed in, in the Greater Montreal region, which is uh, first in history. And now, of course, what's going on in Europe is, is quite uh, worrisome because of the impact it has on China. And then China has an impact on North America. Mm -hmm. So it is worrisome, but 1.5% growth, you know, that should be in the cards. Okay. My last question is uh, they've counted the Liberals out before. The polls now, you know, indicate the, the PQ is the favorite. Uh, we don't know when an election is going to be called. You probably don't know when an election is going to be called. but. I presume by going for another mandate, you're still confident that the people will choose the Liberals. I'm, I'm quite confident because this is an election about values. It's an election about uh, uh, values uh, that we cherish as citizens in Montreal, in this riding, in Nutrimont and Côte de Neige. Uh, people are scared to speak today in Montreal. You know, uh, people, artists are scared to speak and, and, and businessmen are scared to speak. But there's one day you can speak in silence, and that's the day of the vote, and that's the day it will count, and I'm sure that the population basically is, is fully behind us. And it's the only party with a real economic growth plan, because economy and creating jobs is our, is our not only our passion, it's our obsession. And, and the Plan Nord is a, is a tremendous plan for growth for the next 20 years. Okay, well, I wish you a very good summer and good luck. Thank you very much. Might see each other again. <laughs>